Hi, welcome back to the Caesar Files podcast, a podcast where we review all the most mediocre Netflix movies. Uh, I'm Luke. I'm Max. And this week, we are talking about the movie Army of Thieves, which I'm really sorry for making you watch this. (laughs) (laughs) I remember I saw the trailer for this, I was like, we did Army of the Dead with Max. What if? Just because I know they're going to keep making more of these. We cover all of these when these come out. Mostly to Max mess with Max. <laughs> it's going to so, progressively get worse and worse. Oh, I wish you... I wish that isn't true, but I have <laughs> a sneaking suspicion... <laughs> Um, the reason we're doing this this week is I meant to have a video on Knives Out, which I spent, like, an in-depth video on the, uh, classisms of Knives Out, and then YouTube decided to go, nah, and give me every copyright strike imaginable, <laughs> and that, sorry, we, well, that's not been coming out anytime soon, so it's, and instead we're doing this, <laughs> so, Bit of a downer. thanks YouTube. <laughs> Um, I'm just like, if it, 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 the whole movie is just like, why? It feels like it's trying to be an action movie, but failing very miserably. I'm like, if this is your attempt at like a Marvel esque universe, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, it even had the um. Oh, it wasn't really a post credit scene. It felt like a post credit scene. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't. so did Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead had that post credit scene oh, that yeah. wasn't really a post credit scene. <laughs> I just... I also kind of wanted to do this to, like, me- because mention some stuff on Army of the Dead. Because in Army of the Dead, I said that movie has no flaws. Then on closer examination, I realized it does have flaws. <laughs> um, I think... I found out, and I, and I realized someone. I saw someone point this out, and then realized they're very right. That the reason I liked Army of the Dead is because it's taking the entire movie is just copy and paste from a bunch of eighties movies <laughs> to the point where there's a shot in it which I is like there are there are, there's a shot in it that is the exact same shot in American Wealth in London in the. Really? It, in the, so, I don't know how much you remember Army of the Dead. Um, but do you remember the opening scene with, like, where the zombie gets out of the box cage thing? Yeah. And it chases them, and they get away, and then one of them falls over, and then the other guy offers him his hand, and then the guy offering the hand is jumped upon by the, the, mon- the zombie. That exact thing happens in in American Wealth in London. <laughs> like, to the point where the sh- if you put the shots next to each other, they're, they're the exact same shots. Like, the guy, it's, it's framed the same way. The guy's standing the same way. Like, you could probably, you could probably line up the editing. If you look closer, you actually find out it's the same movie. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, like, and I think a lot of the weird problems with this movie you could say are the same at it in I mean the dead because a thing I heard some uh, points that people talk about Army of the dead is that it for the entire movie it feels like it's gonna do a thing where like they're gonna subvert the genre like points where it mentions um remember because I don't again I know I'm kind of pushing your imagine how much you can remember this movie but um there's a, there are points where they mention he's he's suspicious. We should just kill him because that's the exact because the guy because uh, he's the same guy as in the movie Aliens, and that didn't turn out well. And like points like that would have felt like they should kill him. And then this movie they have bit they have lines of dialogue like you know how in movies where they explain a plan and it all goes exactly yeah. plan. I'm like oh, so do you do you know you're bad? I don't know, it's just there's a lot of weird 
line deliveries. Where they're trying to, they, it felt like they were trying to be funny or trying to, mm. it felt like it was a movie that, I don't know, it just didn't feel, everything was what I expected it to be. It's very, like, obviously, yeah, there's no, there's no suspense in it, he's like, well, yeah. Yeah. And the script, I the script, I thought the script was terrible because every line I almost could have predicted. Yeah. Also, like, there's the, the weird. You know how the none of these like the zombie dream sequences. Mm-hmm. That almost feels like they they made the whole movie, then they realized, oh, this has nearly nothing to do with Army of the Dead because it doesn't. <laughs> um, like this might as well be. You could honestly make this an entirely different thing and. It would make sense. Yeah. So they realize, oh, this is nothing to the army dead. Let's insert a bunch of very dumb, annoying zombie dream sequences. Because <laughs> why the fuck not? <laughs> like to the point, like because when they when they showed the trailer, I don't know if you remember watching the if you've seen the trailer, they mention zombies. I'm like, okay, wouldn't it be great if you included that in the movie somehow? Just saying. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Didn't do that. Um, and, like, a lot of it just, there's a lot of just stuff, and I watch it, and I just think, why? Like, there's, he's got a YouTube channel, and, like, he's got no subscribers and no views, which I don't even think is possible. I think the algorithm, like, at a point is, like, okay, three, you have to, like, nothing? <laughs> I mean, okay, like, do you just put it on Reddit, like, and then out of nowhere, one view, one view, and then he, and then that one view has an has an address which he goes straight to. (laughs) Doesn't question anything. (laughs) This guy is so lonely. He's like, okay, I'm gonna drive to Berlin from another city. Like, no. Have you not seen, like, Taken? Like, this is how you get kidnapped, dude. <laughs> I, yeah, I watched, I was like, oh, so this guy, he, I mean, like, is he that? Is it supposed to be, like, he's so lonely, he just does whatever on the weekends? Hmm. And then when he gets into this, like, because essentially what it is, if you haven't seen the movie, um, he is a lonely guy and he works at a bank. Does he work at a bank? Yeah, he's like a bank person. Where he runs into Karens, who are literally compared to zombies. Obviously. Like, there's a close-up of a zombie. And then he looks back to, like, a lady who's, like, a very obvious stand-in for just Karen. Uh, So he works there, and he has a YouTube channel where he, it seems he talks about safes. Which, okay. And which has zero views, I'm and then he not gets surprised. Who wants to watch videos of people talking about safes? I mean, yeah, because it opens with like a clip of the video, and I'm like, wait, is it just a, him t- looking into the camera, t- telling him the story? Because it opens with him telling the story about some safe cracker, whatever the dude, which is also incredibly pointless and unnecessary. Um, but I'm like, oh, and, but it has like images of the guy over his narration but I imagine that's not in his YouTube channel so is it just him looking into the camera talk, telling a story because <laughs> then yeah it's going to get a little boring <laughs> oh god yeah but then he gets he gets home and gets one view and once and some of that person leaves a comment saying come to this place and uh Here's the password, which, firstly, I have a YouTube channel. This video is on a YouTube channel. If you comment an address, I'm not going to go to it. I'm sorry. That's the creepiest thing. So he goes, there. also, what, what, hyper- what was her plan if he did have people viewing his videos? Like, and she commented it and like eight people show up. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on there. And then when they're he... in there, I feel like the, um, like the, 
the umpire, not the umpire, but whatever, the person yeah. up, up on the big chair. Well, like, she was like, this guy, whatever his name is. The, I, they make fun of his name. They call him Mr. Mr. Nervous Mr. Guy. I wrote it, yeah, Mr. Nervous Guy, yeah. It's just so cringy. But also, they say, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name, which is weird, because you're making fun of his German name whilst you're in Germany. <laughs> like, oh, okay. it's not like he's got, he's in German, he's German, he's got a very thick German name, and you're in, like, the US. Because oh. maybe, even though you're the, a very annoying person, that might make sense. You're in Germany. I imagine most people in this room have names like that. What even is his last name? I forgot. They it's they come up with some weird name thing where it's where in the end of the movie he decides to change his name because it's on a passport, and he wrote a comic book when he was five. I don't know. IMDb doesn't tell me. It was like some Ludwig Dieter. No, that was his name. He changes his name to that. It's something yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he changes his name to Ludwig Dieter, but before it's Sebastian something. I don't know. This movie's not. So, not. And then also, when he goes to the place with the safe cracking, everyone has names as if they're side characters in the Matrix. Like, here are the contestants. Blaze. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> One guy is literally called Neo and looks like he hasn't gone outside in three months and has, like, the longest hair. <laughs> oh, that guy. Yeah, that, I'm like, oh, okay. So that makes no sense. And then he's failing miserably in the test until he gets the force and is able to just put his hand against the safe and see what's inside via magic. I guess the movie's saying if you, if you know enough safes, you can just put your hand up against a safe and know exactly what's inside it. Yeah, as you would. You know, because that's how things work, obviously. I have so many movies, you know. I can just put my hand onto a DVD and I see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what's it called? In uh, what Loki can do, he can put his hand on. He can yeah. Like, read people's minds. <laughs> That's what therapists can do. They just put therapists just put you out their hand on your shoulder, and it's like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that happens, and then he meets the lady. Whatever her name is. Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn Star. Hmm. Obviously. Who I thought was in other stuff, but she's not. She's just... Oh, she's in the new... she was in the Fast and Furious movie. The new one. Because hmm. of course she was. My dad, when he walked in, thought it was Meghan Markle for a second. What? Kind, they have a similar smile, and she's smiling at him for some reason. There's also a bit when he breaks a safe when someone yells, I love you, Mr. Nervous, which is the most generic thing to yell at someone in the movie. Just everything in yeah, the it's, movie is generic. It's just like, it's, but like, it's like you know, do you, I've heard that in like racing movies a lot, because it, it kind of makes sense in a racing movie that there's like some weird like hype girl who's going to yell, I love you, insert name. Insert name here. But why would you say it here? You're at a weird underground safe cracking thing, which doesn't need to be underground because everything they're doing is legal anyway. Oh, yeah. Like. <laughs> no, that lady just has a thing for German <laughs> safe crackers. <laughs> That's just like a very specific kink. <laughs> So that happens, because of course it does. And then she she meets him at a coffee place that he goes to and has a very weird gag where he reacts to people in the weirdest way possible. And says gulp? Yeah, but like, she says hi. He knew he was behind her and he reacts by throwing his coffee in the air and like looking at the ceiling and screaming. Like... <clears throat> But she, it's not like she was creeping up behind him either. Like, if, like, it makes it seem like if I just walked up behind him, poked him on the shoulder, he would do that. It's just, like, 
so extra all the time. Um, that happens. She shows him all the stuff she's pickpocketed, and the one thing that like the first two is like weird. Like she's like she's like here's the ring and the lady. I don't know how you did that. Makes sense. Here's the watch with the other guy, which are like both very normal things to be pickpocketed in movies, right? And then a gun. Firstly, yeah, which is weird for two reasons. Firstly, why does he have a gun in Germany? <laughs> yeah. Secondly, she says she got it from the inside of his thigh. How do you do that subtly? Because <laughs> I imagine he's wearing trousers over it, which firstly makes it holding a gun weird because you'd have to dig around in your pants to get it. <laughs> Secondly, how did you get the gun? If that's where it was. Because it's one of, it seems like one of the things where they wrote it and then didn't think about it. And then I'm watching the movie like, what the... How? So that happens. I think every, every time I... I feel like every time I describe something, I say something and then I say, so that happens. <laughs> um, they go back to her... The house, the base they're staying in, which they mention they're cat sitting for some lady. So they're now off the grid by cat yep. sitting. I mean, you could go to that basement thing you were in earlier. That seems so, pretty off the grid, but okay. For the viewers here, if you ever assassinate a president, mm-hmm. the easiest way to get off the grid is to cat sit. It's true. That's what they should be doing. I mean, like, I think. All these criminals, that Jack the Ripper, that's what he did, man. Cat sitting. Cat no sitting. one ever found him. <laughs> that's it. That's how you get away with murder, guys. <laughs> so, like, that, yeah. He, and they, and they have this thing where they introduce the team with, like, back, with, like, flashbacks with a weird filter over them. It looks like they filmed it, and then you know if you go into your phone and flip through the filters for uh, a picture, there's the vivid filter? Yeah. It looks like they just filmed it, put that filter on, and were like, called it a day. Like, did it. Now it's a flashback. I thought the only flashback... No, none of them made sense, actually. They're all just dumb. Like, they... the first one is... The first what was it? Is the first one the the hacker one, right? Yeah. Where her brother wanted to see Pirates of the Caribbean two so bad that she f- hacked into like Sony to get it, which I don't think is possible. Also, they re- they they talk about it as if oh that was you, which in a way that makes me think that maybe someone in real life did hack Sony. That sounds like something like real. Hmm. I don't know. I wonder if Pirates of the Caribbean 2 was leaked. Yeah, because the way they say it suggests like it's some inside joke for the audience that actually it was, and you know? Hmm. I don't know. Um, there's that flashback. There's a flashback. Is the next one the driver? No, yeah, yeah. Which is also a flashback, which ex- which is just him driving. He hasn't got a backstory. It's just him driving. In a gold car. Because the director thought it looked cool. I don't know. Uh, all, all of them just felt like they were trying to be cool action. Like spy movie flashback. And they yeah. Really dumb. And then, cause like, and then also the last one is Brad Cage. Which even when I saw the trailer was like, his name's Brad Cage. Jesus Christ. Um, his backstory is he got bullied. And then he watched... Con Air and thought he Nicolas Cage is my hero. I'm gonna go what? I'm gonna go become ripped. By lifting books. Yeah. I do that generally at school. I'm, I'm like, ripped. dude, he's like, I've never lifted a book before, but now mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shredded. Um so that's weird. The whole movies. I think that's a good way to describe the movie. It should be Army of the Dead tagline. So, uh, we did this. You could watch it. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. They 
do that, and then they... And then it's just, like, them robbing four banks. There's oh, never any I really reason... Great. Yeah, they rob three banks. They forget about the fourth vault for some reason. <laughs> I know, like, you, if you mentioned... Because the opening monologue, right? Like, the whole thing of the the ancient, like... Uh, vault maker, and they who lives in the far off mat land of Munich, which they say, and I'm not sure if they're joking or not. Mm. Um, they like he so they say he made four vaults, and then made he made a fifth vault, and locked himself in no, the I, fifth vault, or did I he lock himself? Of... And he locked himself in the fourth. Okay, yeah, sorry, he made four vaults, and then he made three vaults, and then locked himself. In, no, because he made four, because they're all named after the four, like, um, operas, which is another thing for some reason. Oh, okay. I thought that he locked himself in the fourth one, though. Yeah, he locks himself in the fourth one. Which I'm... And then... Which I guess is their reason to not get it. Which just but... makes me think, then why have four vaults? Just have three. And what's the point of locking yourself in the vault? They're like it's to it was to close all his harmony and agony, or whatever. Like, so he killed himself in the most dramatic way possible. Starved to death. Yeah, I'm like that's excessive. <laughs> it's just he's, a... he's hunger striking for more pay for <laughs> vault builders. Then he couldn't get out. <laughs> it's like damn it. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's that. I don't know, man. This be. <laughs> But then also, like, whenever they break into... And then they also mention in the beginning that each vault are equally hard. But then when they have to break into the vaults, the first two vaults are super easy. It seems. And then the only the hard ones, like, is relatively hard as the third one. Hmm. So... And also, this guy who, it seems, has only started professionally pro- vault, say, sit, sit, vault cracking like two days ago is the greatest one in the world because he's able to break into them super easily even though they're like no one's broken into them before and also but another thing Mm -hmm. if you if you have if you own a casino yeah yeah, and you want to keep your money secure i think you use one that like is electromagnetic the yeah, the code rather than one that was made in like the eighteen hundreds. I mean, firstly, I, I don't even know if it, I know. Like this guy was supposed to be the greatest locksmith of all time, but he made it in the eighteen hundreds. Like, it's got so part of it has got to have rusted by now. Like, <laughs> you didn't make a single better one since. Also, they say like it's between them, it's a hundred and forty million dollars, and I'm pretty sure. I haven't looked this up because I imagine if I look up how much money does the average bank vault hold, you get put on a list. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's not like a ton for a bank vault. And also, I don't think that fits into like seven duffel bags in total. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. This movie's not helpful at all. <laughs> it's. it's it just, I feel like they just thought. We'll make a movie. They did no. They did no research. They wrote the script in about three days, and we're like, we did it. Great, Let's make the movie. Oh. And then just all everything is just terrible. Everything I know, like it just looks like they. It feels like they thought about nothing, hmm. and then gave it to the director. I'm like, here, do your thing. It was yeah. Also, I had this in my notes. I decided to write notes after a point. Point was like, okay, we need to. We need to write things down here. Brad Cage looks exactly like Hugh Jackman. Yes, that's what I was thinking. He's the Wish version of Hugh Jackman. He is just Wish. Yeah, you're right. That's that's the good way of describing. He's Wish version of Hugh Jackman. Oh my god, I completely forgot to say that because I last I night when I last night when I watched it, I was thinking the whole time. He looks like Hugh Jackman. He just like, yeah, he looks like a younger Hugh Jackman essentially. Yeah. Yeah. There's also like a weird. Um. Euro, Euro, I forgot the name of the thing. The, the, the police people. Yeah. 
what are they? What's that? What are they working for again? I forgot what it's called. It's uh, the EU. Oh, EU, yeah. Well, uh, uh, oh, Interpol. Yeah, um, yeah, the Interpol. They're not necessary. You can cut that whole thing out. <laughs> They're all just, like, a bunch... Like, the main character... Main, like, Euro- Europol, Europol guy is just an <laughs> abrasive asshole the entire movie. <laughs> like, to the point where, uh, like, his side... Sec- side lady? I don't know. They... Like, is, like, okay, I'm sorry my partner's an asshole. Woman to woman, will you give me a tip? I'm like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> Why does she give them a tip? Oh, because they threatened the brother, didn't they? I guess. I don't know. I don't know, Max. <laughs> I think I'm very reason, confused. I think the only reason they had the Interpol whole Interpol thing. It's just so they could have a quote-unquote emotional ending. I I guess. Like, but then also like, yes, yeah, so I guess that's the only, like, I can't think of another, that must be the only reason why they did it. Because but I also noticed I, you must, you, I understand if you don't notice because this, but there's a bit where they I'm the only way, a reason I could have there's a bit where I saw another scene flash on screen for a second and the only reason I think that could have happened is they had a scene there and they cut it out, but they didn't fully cut it out. So the Wait, very what? beginning of it, in the in the the first Interpol scene where in that where they're in that, that conference room, right? Yeah. A shot from another scene flashes on screen because really? it looks like they meant to cut it out, but they didn't fully by accident, and then no one proof watched it. <laughs> And I was like, did the editor just give up? Because it seems that it's like, it seems that the editor just gave up. Because if you look away, I will notice it. But I was watching the scene, it just flashes. And you can tell because it's a much lighter scene than the other one. At least what I can see here. Hmm. I'm like, oh, did they forget to edit edit it out? Like, because I've done that, but I'm a small YouTuber. I I am not Netflix. Netflix should be able to do this. Maybe they just like, weren't. What well, do you think they were in a rush? I mean, how long ago did that movie, did Army of the Dead, come out? And but how long ago did they say that they were going to make? This I always, I think, it was always supposed to be. Oh. Release now because Army of the Dead was supposed to be a summer release because um, you know, it's, it's movies make most people watch movies in the summer. Hmm. This, I mean, this feels a little rushed. I don't know. It does feel a little rushed. But I, it's not like anyone really was waiting for this movie to come out, That's so I don't know why they rushed it. Like they could have released it on like in December, no one would have cared. God, even like February, like no, I don't think anyone's like nervously awaiting this prequel about about the weird German guy from Army of the Dead. Yeah, hmm. is that? Uh, what else? Like, a lot of this, this movie has a lot, it feels like, a, it feels like an AC's movie almost, with just, there's a lot of what the fuck, for no reason stuff mm. thrown into it. And it's kind of like, they just needed, it feels like they added, um, they came up with the concept, and then, that was it. Yeah. They came up with the concept for a movie, and then we're like, okay. And then they made like a, they kind of just mishmashed it together. Like this yeah. would look, they needed a second movie to cement this cinematic universe. Hmm. I don't know. It seems weird. Yeah, it is weird. I felt like it, the only intro, cool, the only cool ish scene uh-huh. was when they tricked them into thinking. That they were meeting at five. That whole little plot thing. Yeah. Where they, I, that's the only bit where I was like, that's kind of cool. That felt like a movie. But then everything else was no. Mm. But like, and also like, there's, I, don't, I can't even remember what happens in the ending. I think my brain was just like, we're not doing this anymore. I started just to zone out in the ending. Because hmm. it's just like, I know what's going to happen. They're going to, you know, they're going to, Break the vault, and then yada yada. 
you know, it's not super surprising. Hmm. E- exactly what you think is going to happen happens. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Also, they have this, they have the, because they need, I guess, like, they realize, oh, the Interpol guy isn't that much of a villain. We need another villain, so they get discount Hugh Jackman to be the villain. And then the the hacker lady leaves with De- Ludwig Dieter and Gwenadine Star. Great names, by the way. Um, she leaves with them, but then Rolf, the English driver guy, stays for no reason. Like it, <laughs> it doesn't seem like he has any reason to what to stay. He's just like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, and then, and then he asks if he can change sides at the last minute. I would have liked yeah. him because he didn't actually do anything wrong. I, I'm just like, I mean, I get, I mean, that's the thing. That he doesn't do anything wrong. He just does nothing. Yeah. He doesn't do anything at all. He just drives Brad Cage. Great. Again, like, did they get these names out of a name generator? <laughs> Those are like bot names in video games. <laughs> it sounds like it. Like, Brad Cage sounds like some crappy 90s video game about god knows who or some like wwe wrestler whose whole thing is he imitates action movies <laughs> like i don't know this movie guys it's stupid on so many levels uh i mean, I mean yeah the fun one oh, no you would gonna... I was just going to say, if they tried to make this movie ridiculous, they did a great job. Yes, if you're trying to make a bad movie, this is like masterclass. You win an Oscar. Thank yes. There's a thing that you, we mean a Razzie. A Razzie. That's what they're called. They're Razzies, yeah. Oh, well, they, they win a Razzie or Oscar for worst movie. Oscar for worst movie, which should be a kid. Like, honestly, I'm surprised isn't a thing on Netflix yet. Oh no, Netflix is weird. They've been making a lot of movies that sound interesting in theory, but then just aren't. Like, The Harder They Fall, I got like an hour and a half into that. You mentioned you started it. Hmm. How, how far did you get into that? I literally got to the bit where they go into like the saloon. Okay, yeah. That's a weird movie too, because we're not going to do it in the podcast, so I'm just going to like talk what I think of it so far. The ho- it's weird because firstly, it looks feel like it's fi- been filmed on like an iPhone. It looks like one of those cinematic things filmed on an iPhone. So that looks it looks terrible. The it's and it's weird because you mentioned that you'd heard someone say that it has an all all black cast, right? Mm. And it might as well because the own there are three. White character, three white, okay, four white people talk in the movie. They're all in one scene, which is a scene that you could cut out because the whole thing is like, the whole thing is that they have to, they have to get Idris Elba, who's the villain, off a train headed by the Union, no, by the Confederates, which cowboys in the Confederacy did not exist at the same time. I don't think. Maybe they did. I don't know. Um, yeah, so they're fighting. They have to get them off a train for the Confederacy, which is weird because then it's like they have a whole town. Ta- they have a town which is just black people, which I don't think existed then. So it's like the f- the beginning is like realistic and then it kind of goes off. So I'm like, oh, you need you just to pick a theme. It feels like they're just picking Confederates because they know Confederates are just the villains. Hmm. You know? I don't know. It's a little... That's weird. Um, it was apparently... I found out someone there's a, that there's apparently a reference to Chadwick Boseman. The train Idris Elba's on is supposed to be like... Is it called the C.H. Boseman? Hmm. Which feel, just kind of feels... I just feel bad for Chadwick Boseman now. Like, yeah, I don't know, Netflix, what are you doing? You were doing so well. I was, like, really happy for Netflix. For a brief bit, I was like, see, Netflix, they're making all these good movies. They made Fear Street. They're winning Oscars. They're making, like, Irishmen, stuff like that. They were doing so well. What happened, Netflix? 
What happened? Um, uh, yeah. So that was the uh, that's that's Army of Thieves. It's a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> Hardly even a movie. Another way, just one more thing. I think we're probably around this up soon, but they. I don't get my biggest thing is it's just like why make the movie because they killed him in Army of the Dead. Did they? He's dead. They didn't. This if they're going to bring him back, this you get a post credit scene in this to show that, or maybe you're like a zombie version of him. Because that'd be cool. Hmm. Like they have a whole thing where the original cast, the cast who died in the original Army of the Dead, come back as like zombie version of themselves. That could be cool. They don't do that. But maybe they're not going to do that. Maybe they will. Who knows? So, it's just... if, And I know people that I could have... A, the, they made a Black Widow movie, even though they killed off Black Widow. But that feels like they might bring it back. I think they're probably going to bring Black Widow back. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Hmm. So, I don't know. The tagline of this movie, more safes, less zombies... There are five in it briefly because we added them and we realized this has nothing to do with the other movie. <laughs> well, yep. It's a movie. Yeah. It's more of a cameraman who fell down the stairs and <laughs> what he, as he fell, and then yeah. the director directed him. And just the director was like, oh, we can it. make something with this. <laughs> Netflix was like, yeah, sure, we'll put it on our streaming service. We don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. I think I have a video on a much, much better uh, heist f- heist in Paris movie. Le Cercle Rouge coming out, video coming out next week. So if you want to see a version of this movie that is good, check that out. Um... <laughs> Uh, yep, yeah, so uh, I've been Luke. I've, I've been Max. Been Max past tense. We're not Luke and Max anymore. <laughs> We're something, ex- ne- well, something else next week. And this has been Army of the Dead, Army of Thieves, damn it, um, on the CFAS podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, this is Luke. If you liked that video, please like and subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications about new videos.